What's up, everybody? This is Dan Giffen, as usual. Welcome back to the Ableton Music Producer Podcast. Today, we have an awesome guest. Her name is Jerilyn Patton. She produces under the name Jalen. She is an electronic music producer from Gary, Indiana. She's been associated heavy with Chicago's footwork scene. She makes some really interesting experimental music and quit her job as a steel mill worker to pursue music full time. She's also collaborated with some really cool artists and directors and choreographers, including Wayne McGregor, who's worked with Tarzan and Harry Potter. Also, Bjork, Ben Frost, Kyle Abraham, the list keeps going. In this episode, she talks about her experiences collaborating with well-known artists and producers, um, also being vulnerable and more expressive in her music, how she does that, the balance of intuitive versus technical producing, also some fun stories about how she started booking shows before she even knew how to perform in Ableton Live. It's a great episode. But before we dive in, I want to give a huge shout out to Melodics, our sponsors for this podcast. They make a really great desktop app you can download and you can plug in almost any MIDI controller or a electronic drum set and practice your skills producing, performing. It's a really fun way just to step up your practice routine and gamify your practicing. A lot of guests on this podcast have actually been using Melodics and it's just a really fun way to grow your skills. They have a huge lesson variety. You can download the free trial if you haven't already. Go to Melodics.com, M-E-L-O-D-I-C-S.com. Also, if you decide to join the subscription, use the discount code LPO-20. Also, speaking of Melodics, wanted to let you know, um, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that I've had a goose problem. There's been a ton of birds outside of my studio apartment, and they're just always honking, and it's been annoying. So I decided rather than getting mad at them, I just decided to exploit them. So I partnered with Isotonic Studios and Melodics and Ableton to give away up to $500 of prizes combined. And we're gonna pick three winners. So all you have to do is create a 30 second beat and use the goose sample that you can download. If you want to enter, the competition ends July 31st, 2021. All you have to do is create a 30 second beat, just use a sample of a goose that I recorded and go to liveproducersonline.com slash sample dash contest. That's liveproducersonline.com slash sample dash contest. And you can enter the Angry Goose sample contest. And you can use the sample however you want. You can make a synth. You can use the goose honking as a kick drum or snare drum. Get weird with it and win lots of prizes from Ableton, um, Melodics, or Isotonic Studios. Shout out to them for giving away the winner prize. So yeah, check out the website, join the Angry Goose Sample Contest, it's a good time, and here is today's episode with Jalen. Well, thanks for joining the podcast, it's good to see your oh, face. Yeah. Good to see you too, it's like, night. I know it's like the, the thing of people and human interaction is... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll never take that for granted ever again. No. No, definitely not. Well, where are you based at right now? I'm at home, I'm in Indiana, like... Okay. Yeah. Home, I was literally, I just stopped. Um, From Gary, right? Are you still in yeah, Gary? In Gary okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, yep. I'm in Gary. I, I literally, two minutes before I was working, I'm, I'm working on a remix and I was just doing like those, not final touches, but you know, just like right before so I could put myself on pause and know, you know, know where I'm coming back to and yeah. all that, save the file. Don't lose the file. No. <laughs> Never lose the files. Never. Don't lose the files. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. I think a lot of people have. Yes. So have I. I had to rebuild mm-hmm. one of Wayne McGregor's songs from scratch. Oh, shit. From, That's a big one. Yeah. From memory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anybody who doesn't know who Wayne McGregor is, like, he's a total badass with like choreography and has done a lot of directing for major films. I think he was involved in like Harry Potter, wasn't he? And uh, um, when the Tarzan movies, he was involved with that as well. Uh, but yeah, no, he's a legend. So yeah, back up your stuff, everybody. <laughs> yes, back up, yes, back up your stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, your music's really cool. It's very, very interesting and eclectic. It's kind of hard to describe. I mean, how would you describe your music to somebody who's never heard it before? It's the vulnerable version of, of me. Yeah, the, that's good. The vulnerable me. Yeah, it's, that's it's they, deep. Yeah, like just just me, just the. Most people are like, oh, no, my vulnerability, let me run. And it's like, no, not me. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very rhythm based, right? Like very yeah. dancey, but it's like a, a eclectic mix of almost like tribal with like some trip hop with a little bit of everything else blended into yeah, it. Yeah, like whatever, you know, yeah, like whatever mood yeah. I'm in. Like I love, yeah, I love rhythm. I love rhythm. The first drum, I mean, the first drum beat, the most important one is your heartbeat. So, you know. Yeah, because <laughs> if that's not beating, then you're not making much music. Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> just all dry bones at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Did you come from a drumming background? No, actually. Um, that surprises me a lot. No, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't. I, as a matter, I'm not, I'm not trained. I'm not any of that. So, okay, um, just all ear. Just yeah, I'm very yeah, just all ear. I arranging how things should go. Yeah, just really all ear. Just you know, um, giving a gift and trying to use it to it, to the maximum extreme, at least on this side of the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I love that. Um, maybe for people who don't know, you give a little bit of a, a yeah. brief background. I'm going to do a proper introduction at the beginning of the podcast. But like for people who maybe don't know much about you, like how did you get started into music? Maybe just share a little bit of how that led you into Ableton. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's the Ableton podcast. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, okay, so the Ableton story is funny. Um, Cole and Ben Casey could definitely run you down on the Ableton story, but I'll I'll, I'll tell it the short. Oh, nice, part. yeah. Shout out yeah. to Ben. I know Ben yes. and Cole. Great guys. Yes. Love them both so much. Um, where I started making music in um, the end of 2007, early 2008, um, and with no clue as to what I you know what I was doing or any you know anything like that, and. Um, my first intro uh, doll was, and still use it to this day, um, is FL Studios. And so I started probably like in version, probably about four or five. Okay. Yeah. So then, because by the time I, by the time I got to version seven, I could actually make rhythm. So yeah, so it was like back then. <laughs> nice. I, yeah. So I, I'm, I would describe my music, of course, in the, um, electronic background not i wouldn't say techno or house or anything like that i would just say it just is you know just electronic i would just suggest just listen to it but you know don't it's go very, off what i say yeah it's very yeah. Ex experimental dance music yeah, call that. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly it's just very you know experimental very intuitive but um so i started yeah, at the end of um 2007, early 2008, and fast forward around 2010. Um, well, no, around 2008, I, I met uh, Mike Paradinas, who is the label president of Planet Moo Records, which I'm on still. Yeah. Um, he had created the um, Bangs and Works volume one and two, and I ended up on volume two. Um, and the tracks, that's how everything started, was with uh, the track. My track, Erotic Heat, um, just jumped off everything. Yeah, it's a dope track. <laughs> Thank you. It just, yeah, it just seemed to like jump off everything. And um, I was afraid to put out Erotic Heat when it first came, you know, when I first had done it. And I threw it on Facebook in a, in a video and everybody loved it. Mike saw it. It's like, yo, I got to put this on this, on uh, the compilation, on the second compilation of Bangs and Works. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, that's all right, how I, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, so that's how I ended up on there. Then fast forward, 2013 comes, and then uh, Rick Owens asked, could um, I do an extended version of Erotic Heat? So I, I did an extended version. So I completely destroyed the original, did an extended version because he needed it to be like 13 minutes long. So it's like 10 or 10 to 13, something somewhere in there. And so I did that, sent it back to him and he loved it. And then used it for his show for, um, for fashion week. Um, I think that was, I'd always get it wrong. Just, just look up fashion week type Jalen Rick on. Okay. Pop. Okay. Yeah, um, um, so then that happened. And then when that happened, that spark, um, Mike was like, yo, we got it. We, you have to, you have to get an album now. Cause it's about that time. I had been making so much music over in the course of that time. So he's like, let you know, let's do an album. And so I said, okay. So I do the album and then, um, which was dark energy. Yeah. First album, and then dark energy comes out and then it explodes. And then the first record was 
best record of 2015 for The Guardian. And then also, I want to say Pitchfork. Yeah. Is, yeah. I said it was. Yeah. Like, so yeah. first record that happens insane. OK, so whew, that yeah. passes. <laughs> <laughs> no, congrats, then, though. That's really dope. That's an awesome milestone. Thank you. It it was a crazy milestone. So then I'm um, very grateful for it, though. So then yeah. now fast forward, Black Origami comes out. Well, if I'm making Black Origami. And then in the middle of making Black Origami, I get approached by Wayne McGregor for autobiography. So I ended up making they, I, I was simultaneously making both of those at the same time. Yeah. So he just like Wayne McGregor just shot you a random email out of nowhere, or how did no, that? No, 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 no. I actually, so I actually met him through um, Unsound Productions. Okay. Um, and they introduced my music to Wayne, and Wayne was like very happy and excited about it, and yeah. you know, went to work, and I was, you know, I was like, oh, okay, you know, like once I, you know, got approached with everything, and I was super excited. And That's cool. cool. Yeah, and. Then we actually met face to face in Chicago in 2016. Um, so he could give me a better overview of what he was looking for for the for the uh, for autobiography, the piece itself. And I was super nervous because I was like, OK, I hope this comes out right. Yeah, I hope he <laughs> likes it. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up we were working hand in hand, like hand, well, hand in glove. Honestly, I had changed my entire sleep pattern around so that. Um, I could cover more ground with him. Mm-hmm. And so I was going to, be, I was waking up at two in the morning and working and then going to bed at six in the evening and then just working until, like that until I got everything done. Yeah. And yeah, so it was, it was, it was, it, it was real, you know, it was the sacrifice and mm-hmm. got it done. I was super excited um, that Booker. it came, came out the way it did. Yeah, and that's awesome exposure, you know, having a name like him. He knows a lot of people and never know where that's going to open new doors. That's cool. No, of course. Yeah. If, yeah. I mean, you know, it was just even even if it didn't, you know, I, it was just such a great opportunity. Honestly, sure. If it didn't, yeah. Did you enjoy like, do you like the idea of writing for somebody else or or do you prefer just to kind of free flow and just write whatever you're feeling in the moment? Because some people really like writing for film or TV commercial cannot stand that. And they have a whole different process for doing that, you know, mm-hmm. versus somebody who's just writing for fun and their own creative freedom to do whatever they want. I think I like writing for fun, but I yeah. can write. Most people, when they approach me, which I have greatly appreciate, I love this about the people who I have worked with. They always approach me in the way that I haven't run into somebody who was dictating to me. Yeah. Usually how I get approached is that it's like, okay, Jay, you have this style and I want to use this style, but they never tell me what to do. Okay. They just say, so this is what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. You make this work around what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is that's it's very nice because I think that's the best. That's with Wayne. One of the things he said to me is I'm not going to, and I wish so many people would hear this out because it's so true. He said to me, and now it's like, I won't take anything. I won't work any other way now that he said that to me. He's like, I'm not, he said, if I micromanage you, I'm not going to get the best out of you. So I let you do you. And mm. then I step back. And that's, I now I can't work any other way now. So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's great. That's good yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and I, and I don't think, um, I've just never been dictated to. Of course, I've been given a storyboard. I, for like for a video game, I've been music for uh, Paloma Dawkins, who was a uh, video game designer based out of Montreal. And I created music for her. And, you know, she had a whole storyboard, a theme. But uh, even in that, it was like, OK, Jalen, do your thing around what I just said. Yeah. It was always like that. So I'm, I'm happy that everybody I've ever collaborated with has always given me the room to just say, OK, I said my spot. Now yeah. you just go from there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like, that's true. You know, yeah. I mean, and I think it's very similar for you when you do a collab with somebody else, like finding people you trust and you already kind of vibe exactly. with their style, you know. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like usually, like for an example, like I was just talking to um to Holly and um been friends for almost eleven years now. Mm-hmm. And um Holly and I are very on the fly people as far as <laughs> 
<laughs> like when we're trying to actually do something and work yeah. and our work relationship is hilarious. I, I have to laugh at it myself. But, you know, like when I work with Holly and Holly's just like, yeah, you know, here's this stuff. Go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This folder I got. Go. <laughs> You know, after that, it's like green light, you know, I've always worked that way. And then I, I send it back to her and then it's like, yeah. oh, crazy, you know. And yeah, we've we've it's, it's it's been fun for me, like collaboration wise and people trusting me to do like their remixes. And now recently working with um Kyle Abraham, yeah, um, he's also a legendary choreographer, you That's know, cool. and it's, you know, it's it's. People trusting me is great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I ha- have to honestly say it's nice to have built a reputation where people are like, hey, Jalen, I trust your sound mm-hmm. for my work. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people and that you work with and relationships are everything in my mind. Like, for yeah, sure. it is. It is because and also, too, you know, you build the your, you know, your friendships around, you know, they become your friend. They become your family, mm-hmm. you know, because especially when you're traveling together, you know, like. They these people become your family. You, you're you're talking to them constantly. You know you're trying to actually figure something out because what happens is you've stripped away. This is Jalen and Wayne McGregor, or this is Jalen and Kyle Abraham. Like that part's gone. Now it's like okay, so how are we going to make this work? So none of that mattered. Like everything you've done up until this point, it's like it doesn't matter. Yeah. What are we going to do right now? <laughs> Yeah. to make this work and that's what i love that's how i i love to work because i think it is the most effective way because if you know just completely it's like starting from scratch nobody knows you nobody none of the shaka khan said it best i don't she's like every time i make an album all the grammys all the everything said none of that matters it doesn't because the only thing that matters is what i'm doing right then yeah nothing else matters doesn't matter nobody cares just work where you at (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. definitely totally yeah Yeah, there's something very like magical in the creative process of like writing and collaborating with somebody else in the creative field like if i was to like work on a car with Mm -hmm. somebody i just met like i feel like i wouldn't have the same magical connection with them as if i was like working on a song with another creative like there's yeah, just some, there's something about it. I think there's like a vulnerability that maybe happens when you're doing something in the creative absolutely. arts with somebody else that you just share with the world. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have no idea how the people you're listening who who are listening are going to respond. Like I honestly, I just I had a I had a Met performance premiere the other night. Yeah, I watched it. It was dope. It was like in a, a creepy church kind of thing. <laughs> at, the, at the cloister. It's beautiful, actually. It was beautiful, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was some like effects and stuff that was yeah, kind of yeah, cre- yeah. The statues yeah. kind of creeped me up. Everything else is really tight. It looked good. Yeah. Yeah, it was it, it was so funny because everything up until that point, see, these are the moments no one sees. So everything up until when I actually hit the first play of starting, everything went wrong up until that point. Oh, really? All the tech was just wrong. And it was my fault because I was trying to, like, my, everything kept cracking. But actually, it turns out all I had to do, I had the wrong setting. Oh, snap. Yeah. So thank goodness we figured it out beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that would have sucked. Yeah. So yeah. that happened. Yeah. But, you know, like, those are the, those are hard moments, but it's all worth it. And, you know, again, very vulnerable moments. Mm-hmm. Um like a lot of people hear my music and it's like, you know, I guess it's, it's bold. So you just feel like, oh, the person who's making this is also just this bold. <laughs> you know, like, but it's like, no, I have vulnerable, very vulnerable. Yeah. 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 yeah I think we all, that's part of being human, I think. It's part of being human. Exactly. And, and that's what we, we have sh- walked away from hmm. being human. Like a lot, like, and it's just like, I, 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 hey, I have feelings, you know, mm-hmm. and this person, you know, somebody else has feelings. This person has feelings, you know, is we, mm-hmm. I'm not a machine. I can't pump out a hit record every time. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. That'd be nice if you could. It's like be, no, it wouldn't. Actually, I wouldn't enjoy that because it's like, well, where's the challenge? If I can do it every time, it's like if if I knew like every time I put out something is going to be a hit record just because it was me or just no, I mean right. it has to be. Yeah, there has to be a challenge. Yeah. I think that comes back to like the intention behind your music. Like I'm just making music for me, really. At this point, it's good therapy. You know, if it, it goes is. places, great. If not, great. 
that's my approach. No, that's my approach to my entire career. I can't. Uh, yeah. And you yeah. can feel that. I could feel that in your music too. Cause it is very outside of like the main mainstream of a lot of dance music genres. Like it's very mm-hmm. unique, which I think works to your advantage in a lot of ways as well. But, but yeah, so you never actually shared like, how did you get into Ableton Live? Yeah, I guess. so Ableton Live. Okay. So b- backtrack 2016. Um, I had a, I got an approach um, to do a live show. This was, oh my God, Mutech. Never forget. And Mutech's like, well, we, and at that time I was doing what uh, I was doing DJ sets and I would bring my controller or whatever. And then they're like, well, that's cool and all, but we only do live shows. And I was like, so I agreed to playing live before I knew how to play live. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happened, I was like, damn, I actually got to learn how to play live now. <laughs> it was so like, cool. That, yeah. <laughs> it was like, so what does that entail? We'll figure this so, out. Yeah, we'll figure this out because now at this point, I don't have a choice. Right. Um, so then I can't even remember how Ben Casey and I met. I, I, but what I do remember is he is one of the not the sweetest people. I can't even use oh, yeah. him. He's yeah. one of the sweetest people I've ever met, him and Cole. But yeah. um, so I, do, I remember meeting Cole. I think we were in Barcelona for Sonar, I, I want to say the first time but anyway back to ben so I, yeah. I meet ben and i'm like i don't know how to play live i remember just giving him the whole spiel i don't know how to play live no cole introduced me to ben because i had okay. told cole this whole spiel i have no idea how to do it yeah this. it's a small <laughs> family of ableton people and the yes. brand manager yeah yeah so they're not, i'm like i don't know but i have this show and cole's like i'm gonna hook you up <laughs> He calls me Big Dog all the time. So he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook you up, Big Dog. So he hooks me up with Ben. And Ben's like literally would spend two hours with me at a time, like on Skype, showing me how to use the push tube. Oh, wow. And how to play live. Shout yeah. out to Ben. Shout out to Ben. No, for what real. Boss. I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to do any of this it had Ben not showed me how Damn. to do it. Yeah, yeah. For real, for real. Thank you, like, Ben, for your service. We thank appreciate you, it. for real. Yeah, because I couldn't have done that. And he literally, he got me ready to play in about two weeks' time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, that's, that's um, cool. yeah, yeah. So Ben's like super special. And Ben also has saved me in the situation where every time I, I have come to go like it locally, I, it's like, I can never, when I, on my tech writer, I have, I need to push too. Right. Mm. Ben one day just got, he's like, I just can't take it anymore. I'm going to get you this push because this is, this is nuts. Oh, like wow. he never gets it. So he did like, he, yeah, just yeah. Hey, just that quick. Jalen here. I'm, I'm it's, it'll be at your door before you get back. And it was, that's cool. Yeah. That's, cool. that's a nice <laughs> early Christmas gift. right there. Yeah, really, for real. Yeah. He's like, you never have to, he said, this is ridiculous. You know, nobody can never get me the push too. like, it's, it seems like it happens more often in the United States than it does overseas. Yeah. So, which is crazy, but yeah, so it's, but yeah, he's just like, you know, hook me up and we've just been super cool ever since. And that's awesome. yes, love them both. And so that's my Ableton story about how I agreed <laughs> to a show before I knew how to yeah. play. Yes. And now <laughs> it's happily ever after you got now over. It's happily ever after. Yeah. I don't even know how to use, I, I don't even know how to use a controller. Um, <laughs> I not control it anymore. So that's I would have funny. to. Yeah, I'll, pr- I'll probably, if I practice, like, for, like, a day or two, I probably could get it. But it, it'd be really be, like, I would really have to practice. Because, yeah. That's I'm funny. Fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I saw an older video of you using a, a controller in Serato. You were, like, yes. DJing back in the day. Yeah, like, yes, use it, yes, with, um, yeah, I was really DJing, like, for real. It was so, mm-hmm. it was so funny. Because I look back on those days, I'm like, damn, I really did know how to DJ one time. Now I have no idea. <laughs> it's all, you like went backwards but also forwards at the same time at the same time yeah. you know, because who taught me how to use the um who taught me how to rp boo taught me how to dj okay. and then like just with getting the basics of like because once i caught the basics of what was happening i said oh oh i get this yeah it's like yeah you just set your cue points and then boom and, and mm-hmm. when you so it's kind of like when you in and you have to learn your music all over again. yeah 
And yeah. then, so like now when I go and I play live, it's like, it's a lot easier because I know my sound. So I'm like, oh, I can just kind of improvise. Mm-hmm. I've had times in the show where I have completely messed up, but nobody knew but me, but I was able mm-hmm. to come back. And, oh, yeah. yeah. No, trust summer. me, I know. Because the first time I DJ, it was thankfully it was a small show. I didn't mm-hmm. set any cue points. I was like, everybody kept telling me, like, because I'm D- I've been DJing in Ableton, doing some crazy, overcomplicated shit in Ableton for a while for my live shows. And like, oh, dude, if you can do that, you could DJ. It's easy. I was like, yeah, I got this. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. So the first time I DJ, it was so bad. It was so bad. Like, literally, I didn't set any cue points. I was like, I got this. Just stepped up there tried to beat match it was embarrassing no it it, it 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 you know what it happens though like i have had little, <laughs> i have had some crazy moments like pitchfork i lost the whole like first 15 minutes of my performance because we couldn't find a um an a, a, a eight an eight inch adapter like oh, crazy no. stuff. yeah like, crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so um but <laughs> the adapter struggles are real the struggles yeah. were real. Like, and then you know what? You play the next night and it's perfect. Everything was perfect. You know, mm-hmm. it happens. It's just yeah. some shows are, I don't expect everybody, I don't expect every show to be great. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, if you can, because sometimes you have, I, the, the, I'm going to tell you the shows I'm nervous about. When I had the best sound check, those are the shows I get nervous about. No, I know exactly what you mean. I swear. Yeah. No, I swear yeah. to you. Every single time. So there's some major complication, whether it's getting to the show or whether it's a weird sound check or it, the show's always the best. I don't know why that is. It's I've had had this issue. Yeah. Like crazy stuff. I literally one time, I think I had just landed. I forgot which show this was. One of the acts was supposed to be there and they weren't. And they're like, Hey Jay, do you think you can cover two? Acts, or can you just cover till this person shows up and then do your show too? And I'm oh, like, man, yeah. So no, I I did it though. I was I I, I let it rat, but the the audience it was so funny. I to tell you when you talk like diehard support, they were so mad because they thought they had missed me perform. So I had to go around saying, guys, I'm not leaving. I'm still performing at the original. <laughs> <laughs> the original time because they thought they had missed it. it was so funny that's a good sign though if they were that <laughs> mad about it yeah you're doing it right then yeah that's funny well you you actually did an interview with ableton.com with holly um yes a, a little while ago and one thing that you said that i thought was really interesting is you said i don't consider myself such a technical producer but more of an intuitive one yeah and i think what I we were just my work yeah yeah, like maybe you can expand on that a little bit and what you meant by that. Yeah, like I'm 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 an intuitive, so I feel things versus this I'm not I'm not me- mechanical. I'm not, you know, like I know how to do things, yes, but like as far, I, I the, when the rhythm the re- I think like the rhythms that I feel I exert them musically. Mm-hmm. So that's my intuition. I, that's I, you know that that's just in the intuitiveness of my creativity. And then that exudes through everything that I do. And that's what I mean when I say I'm not a, I'm not the technical because, you know, like people, when people talk to me and I'm not ashamed of it, they're like, you know, it has to be this amount of DBs. And I'm just looking at them like, yeah, okay. I'm just going to do, you know, like, cause like my brain kind of shuts down after that. Yeah. (laughs) Cause it's like, yeah, I'm just going to make this sound the best that I can. Like, that's, yeah. like, that's always what I'm thinking. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, that's what I mean when I say, like, don't get me wrong. The tech, the technicality is 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 very important. But yeah. just for where I stand and for what I do and what I'm trying to do and what I'm always trying to do, I'll consider myself more of an intuitive mm-hmm. versus um, a technical, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. I think there's a, a nice balance to find in between between the technical and intuitive side of producing because um there i've listened to a lot of songs i really like where they're, you know the mix personally i think the mix isn't great at all but mm-hmm. the vibe of the song is there so i've listened to it on repeat so many times because i love it oh, yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like and that's yeah. fine like uh, most people aren't sitting there listening you know in their little apple airpod headphones and it's like well you know this 
song is about two luffs quieter than the song I just listened to on SoundCloud. Like, you know, <laughs> they should they should have turned it up a little bit. Like nobody thinks that, right? Like oh, nobody's thinking, hey, no. you're <laughs> yeah, the average listener, they don't care. They just they're oh, like, oh, it feels good. Yeah, exactly. It's so, yeah. It, so, so again, and, and feels exactly the word feels, which goes back to the intuition. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's what's important. You know, for me, it's always been like, that's the most important for me is that feeling. And when you know your sound as an artist, when you can, ex- when, when you can exude that, that mm-hmm. is the best feeling in the world because you trust yourself. And that is a constant evolving, like that's a constant evolution. Yeah. Trust it. You, it's like when you first trust yourself, it's like, no, that's the start, not the end. Mm-hmm. You know, when you first th- discover I have my own sound, it's like, no, that's the start, not the end. Like you have to keep evolving yeah. with that thing. I had a friend, I, th- I think one of the best things is when you can hear yourself maturing over time. Like I can hear the maturity between dark energy and autobiography. Easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and that's important. Hey, just want to give you guys a quick reminder. If you haven't checked out Melodics, want to give them a big shout out for sponsoring this podcast. It's that desktop app you can download and you can step up your skills and have more fun practicing. It's a really great way to gamify you just practicing on, say, your push to finger drumming or playing an electronic drum set or playing your keys and scales on a MIDI keyboard. And they have a huge lesson variety with lots of different genres that you can practice. So check it out. There's a free trial. Go to melodics.com, M-E-L-O-D-I-C-S.com. Give them some love. And if you decide to join their subscription, use the discount code LPO-20. That's LPO-20 and save that money. Much love, everybody. And back to today's episode. Like I'm in the, I'm not in the middle, but I'm, I'm getting ready to start. I've been saying this probably for two years, but no, I'm for real now. I have to, cause I actually signed a contract. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start my third album for real. Oh, right on. As I've never announced this until right now. Oh, wow. Um, we got the exclusive preview, everyone. <laughs> for real, for real. Okay. I'm really okay. stoked because I actually signed a contract. Yeah. I'm honored to hear this. Yes. Yep. yes I thank you. I'm humbled. I'm humbled to say it. So it's going to be with Planning Move. And so the next album is going to be, and then I have to stop talking about it after this, but the, <laughs> it's, it's going to be, it's going to be very percussive. So mm-hmm. in a, in most, in, in most people think of a J, mostly your stuff is percussive, right. like, but not like this. You'll see. That's the best. Okay. I can okay. In, yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of, what kind of tempo of percussion are we thinking here? I have no tempo. My tempos change all the time. That's I have true. no idea. That's why I asked, because it could be a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, whatever pops out when I sit in this chair, you know, as long as yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. So, so that, that was that was all exclusive just for Oh, April. that's cool. I honestly feel special. Thank you for sharing that. That's dope. Absolutely. I know I'm not the only one looking forward to it. Um oh. yeah, I mean your your tracks are very like rhythmic. And have a lot of very interesting, dense sounds, but it doesn't sound cluttered. Like the mixes that you're releasing, everything's very tight. And so maybe, you know, we talked about the intuitive side of producing and the feelsy stuff, but maybe we can nerd out a little bit more on just like your workflow and process of Mm. how you of how you get there. Like, what are some things inside of Ableton Live or little tips or moves that you always use? They're kind of your go tos when working on a track. Well, okay. Oh man. Okay. Don't edit this out though. Cause it's, I, I don't, it don't, it's important. Don't okay. Edit. I won't. So I use Ableton. I only use Ableton to perform. Oh, okay. okay. So I use FL studio when I'm making a record. Got you. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't set, it's not that I haven't learned it. I just haven't taken the time. Mm-hmm sit down and say, okay, I'm going to learn how to, but that is actually something I really want to do to sit cool. down and say, I want to, you know, let me teach yeah. myself because I can now at this point, because pretty much, I hate to say it, but for the most part, most dolls pretty much work this, like kind of the same, you know, like once you have the basics, you can kind of figure your, your right. Your, you can yeah. figure out, translate from one to the next, from one to the next. Yeah. So I haven't done that yet. So shame on me. 
Sorry, Abelson. <laughs> but right. I do use you to perform. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about the performance side then, maybe a little okay. bit. Like, okay. uh, what does your typical setup look like when you're preparing for a set list? Yeah. So my typical set is, okay, so I have, of course, my laptop and then um, the push two. And then I have usually the way that, like the way that I, I have, I perform in two different ways with Ableton. So like, if I'm doing like, say like, with like with, with, with like Wayne or Kyle and I'm playing live, the setup is different than when I'm playing um, like for a festival or a performance or, you know, just like a regular performance. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so a regular performance is like, I have like all of my stems from like every song or different sections of a song where basically everything can, with how I play, I can, I can blend it in either way. It yeah. doesn't matter. How do you, how do you separate your stems? If you don't mind me asking. So, yeah. Well, I separate my stems. Like literally I can either do, sometimes I may just put like a whole percussion section all together. I may do the hi hats, you know, like everything is just in like, this is the percussion here is the actual the 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 sound I used, or um, you know baseline, whatever like or... the baseline. Yeah, like everything is like like separate like that. So because and because it's I feel like I have more flexibility in the performance mm-hmm. versus like when I perform like with Wayne or like with Kyle or with like if I'm thinking like a, a choreographer and I'm live. I want to have, I, I don't want it to be separate like that because everything has to be as is. Yeah. So I keep that, you know, I, I cut it like stem like, but everything is still in the pocket, which means I have to learn how to play that song out now. Right. So that's how that works. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do a very similar thing with my band. Cause I played with a, I play with a saxophone and keyboardist, but I also play drums. Mm, so, okay. so if I'm playing with my band, I do group my stems. Right. Uh, and I narrow them down simply just if for nothing else. So that my computer's happier that way. So it doesn't Man. work my CPU oh my load God. harder. Yeah. And which is, which is <laughs> why so I, I, it is, I sent a lot, I spent a lot of money from my piggy bank to get a computer that wouldn't cry on stage to be able to do more. But, but yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I used, I actually used to DJ a lot more similar to how you do, but I've just simply changed my setup for live. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's cool. So you just kind of, you set everything out by scenes and then you just work through the stems and each scene is like a song. Yeah. I said it through, what is it called? The, um, not even the scene it's like basically like the audio file like the column itself mm-hmm. like I, each column is something different so i can but it if even it's i set it up for myself plus you have to remember i know my sound so mm-hmm. it's almost like you can't really mess up you can but you can't because yeah. this you know everything is grouped in one everything is on the same you know and then everything is on the same tempo now the actual song itself may be different but i set everything on the same tempo because it makes it easier as i'm playing yeah. versus trying to guess okay what tempo is this oh let me you know everything's just on the same tempo the so, same tempo. yeah gotcha so each column or track mm-hmm. is is a song itself or or it, are you it, it could be one of two ways it's either the song itself but it's it's broken down that song is broken down into stems in that column okay yeah. And then so which which like if I wanted to jump from like, I don't know, Guantanamo to like downtown. Well, no, that's not a good that's not a good sound. That's because <laughs> of different rhythms. But like if I wanted to jump from like Guantanamo to like Kyanite, they're because they're both in the same rhythm. See, this is this is why you should learn your music, because yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is where it gets to be important. Yeah. Because the rhythms are the same, mm-hmm. I can then cross, I can then kind of cross between the stems of each track. It doesn't matter. So you, okay. it, it, because the tempo is the same and the rhythm's the same oh, as far okay. as, yeah. So that's how I do it. So then it's like, the, when it's, it, it sounds like, it's like, oh, you're, it's like you're mixing it live, but then it's like, no, but not really because the percussion from Guantanamo yeah. is now being played in Kyanite. That's tight. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, that's very different than just traditional DJing with a stereo file because you're really yeah, blending it's, different it's, instruments from different songs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's so cool. It's, it's, it can be, it can get rough though, because like you, you're thinking something works yeah. and then you find out actually, no, that doesn't work at all. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully you find that out during practice. <laughs> find that out during practice. <laughs> yeah. During the show. Exactly. Right. That's right. That's in a perfect world. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's really cool. And so when you're playing on the push, how much on the push are you actually playing live, like with like actual pads or any instruments? Are you mostly triggering clips and then running effects through them? I'm usually, yeah, for me, well, it depends on like the show, like a Kyle for a choreographer show, basically like everything is, it's a little bit more complicated because everything is, it's like it's grouped, but it's not. And so then that's where the memory of how to play that particular song comes in. So I have to practice. I really have to practice that. Yeah. Right. That makes it kind of, yeah. Whereas with like a performance, like a festival performance, it's kind of like, yeah, like I'm playing, like I'm, I'm triggering, but then I got like, I have effects in there. Mm-hmm. I may have even pulled the effect from the song itself and then dragged it into Ableton. It just depends on, you know, yeah. how, what, I'm so, so moody. What mood I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Well, right on. Yeah. I would dev- definitely love to come see you live sometime. I've seen YouTube yeah. videos, but I haven't seen you live yet. Do you have, yeah. up- do you have upcoming shows in the near future? I do have. Yes. As a matter of fact, t- I just got the ticket link sales today for uh, elsewhere in New York in Brooklyn. Oh, right on. Yeah, so that show would be on the, I play at 2 a.m. I haven't played a 2 a.m. show in so long. Yeah, that's um, a late one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a late one. Um, it's, uh, yeah, in, uh, it, it's in uh, at elsewhere in Brooklyn, and it's on the 7th, well, technically it'd be the 8th morning of um, of August, excuse me, of August 8th. Okay, right so, on. Yeah, 2 a.m., August 8th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For all the people out there who like to stay up late, who live yeah, near New York, go yeah, see her. Yeah, who love to stay up like super late because I may be asleep in my mind. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's a lot of coffee, some jumping jacks, cold water in the face. <laughs> I've done all those things. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then, like, yeah, it's like, okay. And then my, my flight that day is at, uh, let me see. I got like the earliest flight out. Like my flight's at like six six twenty five. Oh no! You might as well not even go to bed at that point. No, you can't go to bed. No, that's why I did it that way because I was just like, I'll sleep when I get back home. It's a quick turnaround show, so it's okay. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. have to pull you off the plane. Like, man, it's time to wake up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I can. That's why I've trained my body. As soon as I sit on a on a plane seat, I can fall asleep. Like one time, I was flying to Japan for the first time, and. I slept that entire flight. The stewardess told me, she said, I was so afraid that you had passed away. <laughs> the only reason I knew you were okay is because you changed positions. But, uh, <laughs> but she was so scared. Like we thought we lost you. <laughs> thought we lost you. Oh man, she's like, I don't get paid enough for this. For real. No, but yeah, I can sleep. I can sleep hard. Like once I sit, I'm gone. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, still speaking of your live stuff, a couple last quick questions, and then I want to respect your time. I know we're getting close to the hour, but as far as transitions, you mm. a lot you have some really great transitions within your tracks themselves. But then also, mm. when I've seen some live videos of you, you transition really well. And I and we, I know a big part of that is just knowing your music and practicing, like mm. we talked about. Mm. But as far as producing within a track, you know, what are some tips for transitions that you could maybe give some of these artists listening? Um. Practice your transitions because transition. Practice your transitions. I, I was in. I'm in. I'm in the middle of a situation right now. I kept, went back last night. Two things: have a transition, get up the next morning, and listen to that same transition. If it sounds as clean to you as it did the night before, if it surprises you, then you need to redo that transition. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if you, if you're surprised, if the flow all of a sudden switch drastically, you have to redo that transition. Yeah, you have to you, you have to have a, you have to have a, you, your whole track should flow. Now hold on, surprises are great as far as as long as the surprise flows within the track. Because sometimes I, I rhythm change. Everybody knows I rhythm change all the time. Yeah, but in the rhythm changing, you have to know 
you have to feel it. That's where the intuitiveness in creating comes in. You have to feel that transition mm-hmm. because you can't just go from this section to, to the next section and then it doesn't make sense. It's like yeah. having this an incomplete. You, you, it's like the story started off great. It's like talking about, like like you said, we're talking about a music about music. Then all of a sudden, you start talking about cars. Like, wait a minute, where is the, the transition? Doesn't it? yeah, there, there's no transition in that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so musically, it's the same way. You have to feel it. Um, and I would just suggest if you can get up the next morning with fresh ears and then he, hear that same transition you did the night before, and it's still as smooth. Mm-hmm. You're batting a thousand. If yeah. not, if it just sounds like a massive jump. That happened to me today. This is a remix I'm working on right now. I went to sleep feeling great. I woke up. I heard this transition. I said, oh, my God. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of memes about people like saying, waking up to the track the next day that I made last night, thinking it was a banger. It's just like it was awful. Like, this is yeah. awful. Oh, God. <laughs> I, this remix right here, I've trashed twice. Oh man. Yeah, I had to I just trashed it twice. I said I can't no, none of this is working. Yeah. And then now I love it, you know. So it's like, yeah. you know, from where for where, you know, from where I was. But sometimes it's like that. You hmm. start off great and then you may get stuck in the middle. You know, it's it's just it's it's, it's it's you never know. If you can predict how nobody I don't I would never want to predict how my day was gonna go. It's just all I can do is sit in this chair and hope I have a great day. Hope mm-hmm. I have a very creative day. If not then don't beat yourself up about it. You're human. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect every time. It's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, be efficient, but no. you know, yeah, practice, just practice. And that's, that's some real talk right there because the whole mental side of producing is oftentimes the hardest, you know, it's like yeah. beating yourself up, you know, like if you have a bad creative day, it happens to everybody, you know, don't like get down about it. Just come back to it the next just day. Just come back to come back to it tomorrow. Yeah. Because I, because yeah. I cannot tell you how many times I've been working for almost eight hours, nine hours, and then I'll go and then all of a sudden, 10 minutes before I'm about to go to bed, something strikes. Oh mm-hmm. my God. And then yeah. it's, and then next thing you know, it's a whole track. I mean, it happens. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of factors at play too. You know, maybe you were like hangry because you didn't eat like all day when you're making that track or like, yeah, you, you know, you didn't. Um, let's look, I have cherries right here. Same there you course. go. I love cherries. Yes. <laughs> love cherries. Yeah, I love cherries too. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you have to, yeah, you walk away, go use the bathroom, take mm-hmm. a walk. Like, yeah. I used to be, water. <laughs> water's good. Yeah. It's essential. Yeah. I would say <laughs> as you drink your Gatorade bottle. <laughs> Yeah, I would honestly, I used to be under the school of thought where I I would be like, I'm just going to make a track as fast as I can. I'm just going to work as quick as I can and get really fast at producing and then just bust it out and get it out into the world. But I'm different now than I used to be. I always like to chew like chew on multiple songs over a longer period of time because like my perspective changes, you know, and for me, (laughs) if I can come back to the same song over the course of a couple of weeks and I'm revisiting it on and off. You know, without being obsessive over it, that's a whole different conversation, you know, where you never actually finish something. And that's a problem. But yeah. like I come back to it, say, like five or six times after it's almost done and I have five new perspectives. And if I can kind of sit there every time and be like, yeah, it's not bad. I like it. Then I know it's a great song. It feels good. You know, exactly. It feel, exactly. goes back. It feels good because, you know, your work, you know, your sound it mm-hmm. feels good. So yeah. that's that's and that's how, you know, that's how I work. You know, I don't I'm not. I'm lucky. I tell people, they think I'm kidding. I said, if I get through four bars that day, it is a good day. (laughs) And most people are like, how do you even, you can't, you can't even like, you know, like Zaytoven's cutting 10 beats, 20 beats a day. Like, I'm like, yeah, but I'm not Zaytoven. (laughs) Zaytoven's great. Love him. Love him. Watching him make beats. I love watching him produce, you know, but it's like, I'm just not him. You know, mm-hmm. so I can't pump out. I'm not, you know, yeah. I can't pump out that much because not to mention my music is is, is quite complex. Mm-hmm. And so I can't, I have to walk away from, you know, there are times I really do need to walk away because I need a fresh ear because it's too overbearing. It's too much on me. It's too overbearing. And I can't hear it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I feel that too. Yeah. Definitely. I know that you said that you're an FL studio person, the producing side and then Ableton live on the live side. Um, Mm. But are there any third party plugins or like samples that you use or anything that you really love on that side? 
I love um, like from like they have nothing to do with either one of them, actually, too, with either FL or Ableton. Um, one of my favorite, I love uh, Omnisphere. Yeah. Serum, um, all your heavy hitters. Uh-huh. What is it? Electra, Electra X or Electra X? I never know how to say it. I think it's Electra X. Electra X? I think so. Yeah, I think that's how you say I'll it. I'll just check that out. I don't know if I'm familiar with that. Yeah. I love um Electra in- Electra X plugin. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That it's a, yeah. Syn- it's a synthesizer. It's a synthesizer. Yes. And you're so funny because they have the most non-traditional synths I've ever heard. So I think that's why I like them. Because what uh-huh. most synths, I don't know what I I I'm not really good at using synths, but this in particular, I, I think it's just because I like their sounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I can work with it because I like the sounds. Um same okay. thing like Omni. Omnisphere, I love um, uh, old school and hypersonic. I still mess with that. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Hypersonic, a real old school that everybody probably forgot about. I, yes, I still mess with hypersonic. So right on. if ever you want to, somebody's like, hey, I want to go back. Yeah. Revisit hypersonic. They got great stuff. That's a Steinberg <laughs> plug in. Steinberg. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the OG. Yeah. Like, that's real OG. That's, that's real old. Yeah. Like I go back, like, I feel like sometimes you have to go backwards to go forward. Yeah. But, I mean, if it sounds good, it sounds good. Who cares how old it is? I don't care where it is. I, honestly, so you don't discriminate. Yeah. Like, that's, I, that's like how I feel about Waves plugins. I think they were, they look old and not inspiring to me at all, but yeah. like they, a lot of them sound great. So it sounds great. Exactly. It's just like, you just don't, sometimes it's like, no, it's not that. It's just, you don't hear it yet. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. You don't hear it yet. So then it's like, wait a minute, I've been having this this whole time and it's been, yeah, it's been, you just yeah. didn't hear it. That's I, have to, I have to force myself to not use my eyes as much as my ears. Cause like, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's easy to get in the details and you're just like moving the same little frequency band up and down for like five minutes. And you're like, I don't even know if I did anything. Yeah, <laughs> you just, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, sometimes it's just, when I'm not thinking about it, that's when I make the best, my best work. When I'm not thinking mm-hmm. about it, um, I, that's when I make my best work. Yeah. Yeah. For, same. Sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because the minute I start overthinking it, it's just like, you know what? Let's just walk away. Let's go take a break. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let's go sit in the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Definitely get out of the studio and get some vitamin D. That's yeah. important. Yep. Yeah. Let's go sit in the sun. <laughs> Well, it's uh, Jerilyn, everybody. Yes. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. This has been really dope. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to include all the links in the show notes for people to go follow you. Where's the best place to hang out if people want to interact with you online? Oh, man. Probably like the best place. Facebook and Instagram are probably because I probably say some of the funniest stuff on Facebook. And then like the craziest stuff. Like, but send me, send it to like, like add my, my, my artist page, but add me as a friend because then that's where you get all the fun stuff. Like, that's the good content <laughs> behind the scenes. The fun content, yes. Yeah, I'm into that. Although I have been following some of like your food posts on IG because like, yeah, you, I don't know if you like to cook, but I was like, damn, that looks delicious. It looks so good. I love to cook. I, I absolutely, I love to cook. I love to cook on Sundays though. Like that is my sun, it's something about Sundays and cooking. Food. Like mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. No, I feel that. I kind of feel that way about Sundays too. That was like a family thing. My it's mom like was always like, thing. yeah, it's cozy, especially like when it starts to get cold, like it's like cozy and mm-hmm. it's like chili and soup, all crock pot stuff, you know? Yeah, Just, I'm into it. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> I could probably sit here and talk about food for the next three hours, to be honest, but I have yes. to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, much love. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh, thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ableton. Shout out to Cole, my yeah. big, I call my Cole's my big, big dog. And, <laughs> and then Ben is my, Ben Casey, that my, I, that my sweetheart. I love him. Thank you both so much. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. They're both great dudes. I've been they really are. blessed to be able to interact with them. So. They are the best. Like they will, if you are in a dark tunnel, they can get you out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Shout out to the Ableton Gang Gang. We love yeah. them. Yes. Right on. Well, thanks for hanging out. Have a great evening. I'll talk to you very soon. You too. Thank you, Dan. This has been great. Yeah, for sure. I'll see you later, Jalen. See you later. All right, peace. Bye. Big shout out to Jalen for joining this episode. 
And once again, if you guys want to win a bunch of cool prizes from Ableton, getting free packs, or a one-year subscription to Melodics, or if you want to get a bunch of really awesome Max for Live devices and software from Isotonic Studios, then join the Goose Sample Contest. Just go to liveproducersonline.com slash sample dash contest. That's liveproducersonline.com slash sample dash contest. And you can use the Goose sample that I recorded in my backyard to turn into a cool 30 second beat. Shouldn't take you much time and you can win some really cool prizes. There'll be three winners. So yeah, give it a try. Go to that website, enter, see more information about the contest. Much love, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, Last but not least, if you don't own the newest version of Ableton Live 11, I'd be happy to hook you up and save you tons of money. So if you're interested in purchasing the latest version of Ableton Live, go to liveproducersonline.com slash buyableton, and I'll be happy to hook you up. Much love, everybody. Later.